Senior Associate Athletic Director. All right, let's talk, Gene, uh, about uh, the, there's been a major scandal that's, that's rocked major college basketball, Division I college basketball. I understand Rick Pitino from Louisville has been let go, as well as the athletic director at Louisville, all about Adidas and money and contracts and that sort of thing. And I know that the University of Montana, uh, we also have contracts with uh, with various companies. Uh, so tell us how that works here at the University of Montana. You bet. Um, first and foremost, uh, I, I just firmly believe that we hire the right people here. And I know that, and I'm not going to speak to uh, the character of other folks at other institutions, but that's what we're all about here at Montana is hiring uh, individuals with integrity, whether it's coaching staff or compliance staff, just any of our staff that are involved day in and day out with athletics. We do have a a very, very good contract with Nike, great relationship with Nike. And I just, we do as a compliance office um, office monitor a lot of things that our coaches do, uh, whether it's NCAA rules or, um, I mean, this case obviously has more to do with laws, but eventually will have something to do with NCAA rules, um, obviously. But we just try our best to monitor with the staff that we have. Uh, I always say, though, that you can have every monitoring system in place, and if someone is looking to break the rules, they will break the rules. So um, that's where hiring the right people with integrity comes into play. The other thing, too, is I know that you take a great deal of time in sitting down with your student athletes and and, and basically laying out the law of uh, what is allowed and what isn't allowed with boosters and with community members and businesses so that everybody knows what's what's up, right? Absolutely. We try to educate our student athletes um, day in and day out uh, about every almost every single rule, but as we know, there are so many rules, but instilling in them that even if they don't know whether something is permissible, that asking is always the right way to go, not asking for forgiveness after, because you can have some pretty severe consequences for something that may be fairly innocent in their eyes. Um, And so just trying to instill in them, ask your coach, ask um, your trainer, ask a compliance person uh, before you do something. Because I, I know that, that uh, in, in some of the big programs, there, there have been TV shows and movies about, you know, boosters doing this and that and the other thing for, for student athletes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, 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 in, in many ways, I'm sure that has probably happened. And obviously it has happened uh, with Adidas, or, or at least allegedly has happened with Adidas. But um, when it comes to our boosters, uh, do you have a chance to visit with them as well and, and let them know what's up? I do in various different capacities. I can't obviously visit with every single booster because the definition is so broad that that then encompasses thousands of people all over, literally all over the country now. Um, But I do meet with uh, booster club groups when they have meetings. Um, We do a lot of education in our game programs on Grizz Vision, um, and we send out letters to local businesses, just giving them a heads up, hey, these are some things that as a business could cause issues within the rules. Uh, We put things in season uh, ticket packets. We put little flyers in there just to get the word NCAA compliance out there. And I think just the awareness is, is helpful, even if you can't get down to that micro level of these are the do's and don'ts. If they are just aware that there are these rules out there that they need to be careful with with their interactions with our student athletes. Now, just ballpark figure, about how many student athletes do we have on campus? We typically have anywhere, um, uh, on average, about 320 uh, in any given year. Okay. So that is, do you think that's a manageable number to, I realize you're just one person, of course you have a staff, but is that a manageable number for you guys to be able to keep track of? I think when we were a staff of one not so long ago, it, it was a bit overwhelming uh, from both the compliance and actually the academic side of our operations as well. But I think three is about the size of most compliance offices in the conference, um, and I'm very, very happy with that. We could always use more. We could always monitor more. We could always do more, but I think that's true in any area, in any um, area of life, but I am very 
happy with three. Very happy. Now, as, as far as the student athletes go, I, I'm sure that, gosh, you know, the dream come true. Hey, somebody wanted to give me a car. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it, 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 in one of those deals where college students, they're traditionally fairly, you know, they don't have a lot of money. Yes. And so it, it can be fairly tempting sometimes. Absolutely. I mean, all of those things, um, I really feel for them because they are, you know, a lot of these kids are getting very heavily recruited, especially the top end and especially in men's basketball because, there are so few on the court, and one, you know, one incredible re- recruit can make the difference for a, for a program. And that attention is amazing. I mean, they, I would, I would be flattered as well. I'm, I don't put any judgment on them, but for them to realize that their entire dream could go down the drain by accepting that, um, I just, I hope that that's what they're thinking, and that they have people around them that are looking out for their best interests and not just their best interest on the court or field, but in life and making that dream a reality. And maybe they don't get caught, but the chances of them getting caught nowadays is probably higher than ever before. Got it. 